than this side. So delta S positive, it increases. All right, in the last situation, I have one, two moles of gas on the left, and I have two moles of gas on the right. So for this one, entropy basically stays the same. There, it would be really hard to tell if there's a difference in entropy. Okay, so if you were struggling with the packet, you look at these examples and see if you can understand how to answer the questions. Okay, that was just in case I needed more space. Um, so how does this all come together with the free energy that we were talking about before? So let me get my pen again. And free energy is delta G. Okay, delta G to be spontaneous has to be a negative. Okay, so the two things we're going to talk about are how delta H and delta S, so that's enthalpy and entropy, and this is free energy. Oops, sorry, that's free energy. Um, so we want it to be spontaneous, and to be spontaneous, delta G has to be a negative. It means that it's spontaneous. Okay, so we're going to show a chemo, um, excuse me, a mathematical equation that relates all these in just a second here. Let me skip that slide. Okay, del oops, go back. Get my pen. Okay, delta G negative or spontaneous process. All right, so that's really important for you to remember. All right, maximum amount of energy that can be coupled to another process to do useful work. Here is the equation for Gibbs free energy. And it talks about how delta H and delta S are related to get our free energy. So if my disorder and my um, heat of reaction. This, let me get my pen again, is temperature in Kelvin. Oops. Um, we won't use that very much because we won't be doing any calculations with this, but we'll have to know conceptually how things change. So our temperature times our disorder is going to be one piece, and then our delta H is going to be another piece. And we're looking for a delta G to be negative. Okay. The ideal is when delta H is negative and delta S is positive because you see this positive is going to be multiplied by a negative, so it's going to make that bigger. So this situation is where um, delta G will always be spontaneous. So we're going to look at a couple other situations in a moment here. All right, the numerical value of delta G is negative in a spontaneous process because the system loses free energy. All right, more. Okay, so this, you have a practice sheet um, on free energy that you're going to have to do, and it has similar diagrams to this and I'm going to talk you through how these diagrams work and then you'll have to answer some questions that go along with it. So first thing, let me get my pen. There's three diagrams on this side of the paper and three on, on the next slide. Let me draw some stuff in here. First of all, I'm going to put this. This is zero for delta G. Okay, if that line is zero. Here are situations that are spontaneous. That means the delta G, oops, go on back. Sorry about that. What I do? I lost my page. Okay, let's get these up here. Sorry about that. Just learning all this stuff. Okay, so again, this is where delta G. right here. Okay, this is the delta G for the first reaction. This is the delta G for the second reaction. This is the delta G for the third reaction. This line is the heat, so that's delta H. And this is delta S. This is delta S. See how it says entropy? It's 
delta S, and then this line is delta H. Put it underneath because it makes it more less confusing. And then finally, this is delta H, and this is delta S. Okay, so what they're trying to show here in this diagram is the situations that will give us a spontaneous reaction. Now, if this is zero, these are all below the line. These are all negative delta Gs. So I'm going to put negative here, negative, and negative. They are all spontaneous reactions. Okay, do you see that this one, this first one, where delta H is negative, and delta S is positive, is a situation where you'll have the biggest delta G being the largest negative number. Okay, always spontaneous, always. All right, in this next situation, the delta S is very favorable. It comes to a nice positive delta S but the delta H is positive as well. So that kind of backtracks my delta G. So my delta G is smaller than in the first situation. So delta S is nice and favorable, great. Just like these were favorable. But this is not favorable, but it can still be spontaneous because um, the delta S is so large. All right, then we go down to the last one. In the last one, our delta H is a negative, and that's favorable. We like that. But our delta S, S in this situation is a negative, and we don't like that one. So this is bad. This is good. But because the delta H is so large, it's so highly exothermic, that the delta G is still negative. So let me just write that there. When delta G is negative, it's exothermic, and when delta I'm so sorry. When delta H is negative, it's exothermic. When delta H is positive, it's endothermic. Put all those number words and variables back together in your head. Again, delta H is the heat of the reaction. It could either be a negative exothermic or positive endothermic. Delta S is the disorder, and it could either be positive or negative. We talked about how we can determine if it's positive or negative just a few minutes ago. So on this page it shows all reactions that are spontaneous and it shows how different combinations of the H's and S's can still make a spontaneous reaction. So let's go on to the next slide. Now we have three situations that are non-spontaneous. Again, pen color. Okay, in this case, this is zero, delta G zero. In this case, all the delta G's are going to be positive. Delta G, delta G, and delta G. If this is zero, these are all above the line. So these are positive situations for delta G. Here is delta H, and it's showing that it's endothermic. And here's delta S. This is favorable, but this is not favorable. Okay, here's our delta S. This is positive, I'm sorry. Um, this is positive, this is positive. Oops, I did that wrong, sorry. This is negative, so this is bad, but this is delta H negative. I'll go through this again in a second. And down here, delta H is positive, and delta S is negative. Okay, this situation at the bottom is important because it's a situation that you will never, never spontaneous. Because first of all, the delta H is endo, which is not favorable, and the delta S is a negative, lower entropy. So those two things together will always make a situation where delta G is a positive 
non-spontaneous, always. Whereas these other situations, it depends on which one's bigger. Is the delta H of endo larger than the positive delta S? Or is the delta H of exo larger than the negative delta S? Okay, so you have to just look at them and understand where, what they're talking about. And we do not have to calculate with this equation, but we have to understand the concepts, which is what I just went through. If you have more questions, please ask. So I'm just going to flip back to the last slide here. And the notations are gone. So these are the situations that are favorable. This one is always, oops, sorry, got to go back. What I said a moment again, always. Ay, ay, ay. Sorry. Always spontaneous. This is delta H negative and delta S positive. So no matter what, you'll always get a delta G that's negative. Always spontaneous. Okay, so in the first situation, and then I had already talked to you about, this is the safe situation where it will never be spontaneous. Okay. All right, there's a quiz here. You're welcome to go through it and see if you can find the answers on your own. Um, and that's the end of the part of the um, chapter that has to do with free energy. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the collision theory in my next little lecture. Let me escape from this and then turn this